Hey, I'm Colin Gray from thepodcasthost.com and today I want to show you around private podcasting, how to set up a private podcasting setup. Specifically, today we'll be looking at Podbean and how they can let you set up unlimited feeds, manage lots of users and lots of other features that Podbean Business, Podbean the business plan offers. So let's take a look. <laughs> Let's take a look at the private podcasting dashboard inside Podbean. In this case, I'm demonstrating Podbean for setting up private podcasting. So you get with Podbean, you get 100 private members within your basic $99 business plan. Uh, it's an extra dollar per member beyond that. But 100 members will do fine for many different organizations. And if you've got more team members than that, it's only a dollar per person beyond that. So not too bad in terms of price. So let's set up our channels. Now, each private podcast is called a channel within Podbean. So click that there. You can see that we've got one set, uh, set up as standard. We've got the Allo2 private podcast. I can create other ones as well. So let's say we set up one for Allo2 developers. We'll say that's private. Submit. So there's another channel. Let's say we've got... Uh, Thinking above my station here, but let's say our Allo2 marketing, as if we've got a, a team of marketers as well. Let's see, Allo2 sales. Uh, so a few different ones here. I'm going to do one of the standards, which is maybe the CEO update, for example. Oops, forgot to click the private one there. Uh, so you can have as many private channels as you like. Uh, public ones, you only get a few within your plan. So as you can see, I actually forgot to click private on two of them there. So we have two public channels here, which just demonstrates, I suppose, how you set up those public channels. But you're only allowed two on this business plan. But I can just click that to make it private. Do I want to set that private? Yes, I do. This one too. Uh, so you can have a public podcast or two plus your uh, different channels here. So that's my channel set up. Let's say I've got those uh, five podcasts. That's my five pro private podcasts to work with the team. Um, groups are an interesting part in that you can set up uh, groups for different users. So let's say we've got a developers group and we've got a sales and marketing group. Now, the way that works is that you can give those groups access to um, certain shows. So if I go to channels and I say the CEO update, oops, that would be available to anyone, of course. So everyone in the company gets the CEO update. Um, I can change who gets that if I go to edit. Uh, in here, I can go manage private groups. And as you can see, this is set to all groups right now. So that's correct for CEO update because that's for the whole team. So back out, but the developers podcast, if I click edit there, I could delete that and give that only to the developers group. Same with marketing. I could delete that all and give that only to the sales and marketing group. So it means that you can uh, you can kind of package up um, any number of podcasts for a particular type of employee. And then you add that employee to that group and that lets them then access those podcasts in particular. Now that would take us to the private members, of course. So if I go to private members here, this lets us actually add people to our um, to our team. So what I can do is and click add member. I can add people individually. So I can say um, Jillian at uh, the podcast place. Top place. Just making up emails here, uh, and I can put them in a group. So what I can do is I can remove that and put her in. She's one of our developers, let's say. Save that. So she then gets automatic access to all of the podcasts in that developer group. I can also add people in bulk, batch add. Um, and I can upload, let's say, uh, I've pre-prepared a text file. And that's going to be added. So that'll be added in 10 minutes. So that was a text file that I created earlier that just had a list of emails in it. I just created that in Notepad and just copied in a bunch of emails. So you could take that out of your team directory, for example, and upload that and they will appear here uh, quite soon. That's much sooner than 10 minutes. So there's all my users there now. 
Of course, you then have to go through, and if you do want to use the private groups, you have to go through and get each one, allocate them to the right group. Uh, so in some cases, uh, it might be better to go through add members. But then again, there's an easier way potentially here with the invitation link. So if you click invitation link, create a new invitation link, and you can say, right, all developers use this one, and they'll automatically be added to that group. You give them that link, this code, that's like the password for it, uh, and then you post that into an email, give that to them, put it into Slack, whatever it might be. They click that, they sign in, and they're automatically assigned to the private developers group. Potentially that's the easiest way to send it around the team rather than adding people manually. And of course, within the enterprise level package, you can also do single sign-on as well, SSO, which means that people use their own logins. Um, you still have to add them in here to give them access to groups and stuff like that, but it does sort of tie into enterprise level security. So that can be a really nice way to do it as well. Now, in terms of listening, there's a couple of ways people can listen. One is via the Podbean Pro app where people can download that from the uh, iOS and uh, App Store or Google Play uh, so they can get them there. So they can listen in that Podbean app. They just have to log in and they get automatic access to your, uh, your podcasts, your channels that way. Or they can log in on the website as well. They can log into the Podbean website and listen to your shows via the web as well. The one downside of Podbean is that because it's all password protected, because it's higher security, arguably, than other private podcasting uh, providers, uh, it's, it's, it kind of locks down how people can listen. So you can't listen just through a normal podcasting app. Some of the other methods, like if you use Castos, for example, and the uh, Seriously Simple podcasting app, you just set a password on your podcast feed. People can subscribe to that feed in any podcast listening app just by typing in that password. So it is locked down a bit more, but in many cases you get features to make up for that with Podbean um, through the groups, through the unlimited channels, that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of a trade-off here. More security, more features, but slightly more um, restrictions on how you can actually listen to it. But the Podbean Pro app is pretty easy to use. Uh, generally, if you're running an employee podcast, it's not a, a huge or an onerous thing to ask your employees to download a separate app to be able to listen to your show. And it is possible to white label an app as well. Podbean can work with you to create your own, your very own app, white labeled so that it only shows your own channels and potentially some curated ones from, public, um, from the public listings as well. Just to show you the final bit, don't have much data on it at the moment, obviously, because this is a test account, but you've got user engagement intel within each podcast. Uh, and that allows you to see how people are engaging with these podcasts. So you can see who's listened to each episode. You can see how long people have been listening, how you know where they drop off. So you can get a bit of insight into what shows are working, what episodes are working, what type of content is working with your staff. Um, and that can be some really nice insights. Um, once your account was up and running, obviously you'd see all the data here. And you also get the standard type of podcast stats, listening stats, of course. So you've got total downloads, how many people have downloaded the show, what platforms they're listening on here. So you can see some standard types of stats as well. And just to show you a few of the final options, if we're going to settings, uh, apologies, if we're going to add account options, actually you can see a few extra things here. So I mentioned you get two public channels as standard, but you can add them and they cost uh, 600 a year for an extra public channel. You can add private members here as well. Like I said, it's $1 per month uh, or $12 per year per private member. So I hope that was useful, giving you a tour of the features inside the Podbean private podcasting uh, dashboard and showing you how to set up those private podcasts. I hope that helped you to set up your own or even if you've not done it yet, if you've not signed up yet, maybe it gives you an idea of how it runs and whether you would want to uh, go ahead and set up your own as well. Of course, if you want to pop over to thepodcasthost.com, we can show you all how to record, how to run your show. Um, and if you use Alitu, A-L-I-T-U.com, that is our software which helps you to create a podcast really easily. If you're running an internal podcast, for example, it's a really nice way to record your podcast um, right in the app. 
Uh, we do all the cleanup for you. So audio cleanup from noise reduction to leveling, all that kind of stuff. We can add on your music, get add a bit of uh, company branding at the start and the end. And we can piece together all the different parts as well. And then finally publish automatically to Podbean. So I'll show that in a separate video, how Alitu recording publishing directly to Podbean works. But as a CEO, as a manager, as someone running a team from HR to anywhere in the company, the last thing you want to do is spend time messing around with the tech, taking ages to recreate that show. So using something like Alitu, A-L-I-T-U.com lets you record and produce good quality audio really simply, really quickly. So do pop over there and check it out as a way to create that private podcast in a really simple way. Oh,